moving on we got news of course on the club in front to continue um news courtesy of resident advisor news that obviously most of you guys would know that i would be happy about and a lot of people that actually live in flipping berlin should be way more happy about in terms of their day-to-day and their overall mental health berlin clubbing returns on the march 4th berlin clubs can reopen on march 4th no restriction well, n- no kind of capacity restrictions or stuff or no masks needed but the 2g plus rule applies which basically means you have to be vaccinated or have re- recently recovered from corona before you can go in there right so standard sort of procedure but bloody hell man it's been a long time coming for them lot in it so it says here courtesy of ra clubbing in berlin is back on friday the march 4th after the return of dancing in germany was confirmed on a federal level last week the berlin senate ratified the decision earlier today february 22nd dancing indoors has been banned in the capital since early december early december and i was lucky enough to go when when did i go i think i might went in like october november to Berghain and then to paloma and stuff so i was able to slip in just before it kind of got crazy jesus man um there will be no mask on social distancing though the 2g plus rules attendees must be vaccinated or have recovered from covid19 will still apply everyone must also show a negative antigen test result regardless whether they have booster shot or not so that's interesting part because if i'm not mistaken i did remember seeing an article somewhere that said something like oh if you want to have a covid vaccine pass to go to europe and for it to be valid you're going to have to have a booster shot like it won't it won't validate unless you have the third shot. Um, I think I read something on those kind of lines. I'm not sure if that's correct, but if I've heard if you're gonna go to EU country, that's gonna be the rule. But either way, <coughs> regards to the rule, the fact that it's open again is a blessing, especially now heading into the summer season. It gives these guys an opportunity to make some money, especially with like the May Day celebrations coming up in April and whatnot. Do you know what I mean, these guys are gonna need to have some option or the ability to kind of be able to go um put on events and whatnot. Um, you know the what you call it the the markets on the outdoors and the weekends and all these kind of things that have been really really missed um that kind of revolve around that whole area are going to be welcome when they go back in and continues to say various venues in berlin will also have also already announced a party such as club ost um hop tosser that kind of boat thing on the side of the river um, i have not been to anon anon anomaly I've not been to Funk House. I've been to Paloma and I've been to Panke, of course. Other states in Germany have also ratified the March 4th opening date, including Hamburg and North Rhine West Westfela. Here's a post from the Berlin Club Commission. So the Berlin Club Commission, a lot of people in the comments have a lot of bad things to say about Berlin Club Commission. I've heard some really, no, on the comments of the Berlin Club Commission page and whatnot. But yeah, they looks like they came through. They delivered. Um, They did something behind the scenes to basically get ratified. And now hopefully the clubs will reopen. Um, Hopefully they also have some contingent, contingencies in place that would allow them to have an idea of what would happen if there is another spike. Because... One of the sad things I remember reading about Germany and Berlin and stuff and clubbing was, I forgot who it was, but some club owner was like, oh, everyone's like coming up to me saying, oh, how happy I must be to, for clubs to be reopened. But as my happy as I am, I'm also sad because I've lost some of my best stuff. And then you forget that places like Berlin or other places in Europe, they take clubbing very seriously and it's an actual economy, right? And people actually have careers working behind the scenes and the industry whether it be for a record distribution company a flipping agency a club whatever they actually involved in the kind of nuts and bolts of that scene so for them for work to be completely shut and for you to be on furlough and stuff it might make you question your life's choices and it might make you decide to maybe i don't know do that thing you've always been having on the back burner but you haven't because you've been having this all-encompassing career in nightlife that hasn't allowed you to be able to go and do a course on the weekend or have to be distracted so it's kind of made you it's kind of made your decision for you because you're working effectively sunday to sunday so then the moment you kind of put those guys on ice and you tell them to sit down for a bit and go and furlough most likely if they've got other interests they're going to pursue it and they might not go back to clubs again but those people are legitimately the bedrock of that clubbing space or that community so to lose them it's probably worse than being closed because those guys and girls were the ones that made your club what it was. And without them, it doesn't, you know what I mean? Like just having people that work in there for, for the sake of it, it's not the same thing. It doesn't, doesn't kind of give the same sort of vibe. I, I imagine the same sort of thing in most major metropolitan city especially when you've got like a popping club, like it's usually never the lineup. It's usually everything to do with 
the that surrounds the club, whether the people that go there, the you know the people that hang around there, the people that are associated with it, but it's never the lineup of the actual people that are playing there. So when you lose those kind of core members, it can be a bit bittersweet when you're kind of open again because you know you're not gonna get those back, and you know those people are gonna be in demand. They might go to other places. They might have changed their life choices in general. They might have popped out some babies and shit, passed away. Who knows? You know what I mean? So um, hopefully they have some contingency to plan to kind of allow them to not be in that position again if they do end up closing. But yeah, Berlin, my spiritual second home is back open. That's great. There'll be a time in my lifetime, definitely, where I've kind of put down on my goal list to have an apartment in Berlin, an apartment here that'll definitely be there it regards to what ends up in my life i definitely would like to have those things options in place and obviously when i'm not they'll be able to kind of airbnb out or whatnot but definitely have that in place so that i'll be able to kind of go when i need to when i need to have a place i can kind of rock up in and just kind of chill out it doesn't matter what it were it could be in prince lauerberg or flipping you know wedding i'm not really too bothered but it'll be cool just to have a little permanent residency there that i can kind of go or semi-permanent that i can kind of go back and back and forth to especially given that most of my work is kind of done through via laptop anyway so um I'm, you know, obviously I'd like to be in a position where I don't need to work nine to five so I don't need to kind of be at a particular place working but um, the fact that we're in this world now at the moment where remote working is a thing will be cool but just in general it'd be great to have that kind of thing as a goal to kind of kind of strive for going forward but yeah big up everyone that lives in Berlin at the moment March 4th clubs reopen if you care about that get involved if you care about that get involved <laughs>